So we've talked about, uh, so far we've talked about the title, uh, the abstract, and the introduction. Right after the introduction, the next section is going to be the methods section. So, by the way, I should mention that uh, you really will see them titled in this way. So the methods section will be called methods. Uh, with the exception, I should I mention, of the introduction. The introduction is just the first thing that you find in the paper, in the body of the paper, so people understand it to be the introduction. You don't have to label it as introduction. Uh, but after that, every section will be clearly labeled. So in the methods section, uh, what you're going to find is you're going to find uh, a detailed account, detail uh, about exactly how the study is, uh, uh, I'm going to say was done. I'm saying was done uh, because if you're looking at a research report, it has already been completed. Uh, if you are writing the methods section for your research proposal, then obviously you would be talking about what will be done. Uh, but anyway, the, the main idea here is we're going to go into a lot of detail, and I underscore detail because uh, you are talking about every specific important thing that, uh, that went into planning the study. So how many participants did you have? What were their main characteristics? Uh, you know, were they, uh, all, were they all women or all men or some mix? Uh, were they college students? Were they all older people or younger? Did you select them randomly? How did you choose people to include in your study? Uh, what kinds of variables were measured and how were they measured? Exactly what tools did you use, if any? Did you have certain uh, some kind of scientific apparatus that you used? All of those details about exactly how you carried out the study are going to be given. And the reason why you're giving this is for other people. So others can do two main things. Uh, so others can, first of all, evaluate. So that they can evaluate and judge your study to see if, uh, you know, after what we're going to see is after the methods section, you're going to talk about what you found, the results you got, and then you're going to interpret those results and make conclusions about them, make statements about how the world works. If people are a bit skeptical of, of those statements, they can go back to your methods section and look to see, based on what they did, do I, do I have confidence in their conclusions? Or can I potentially find flaws or limitations of the methods that they used? Maybe the way that they measured a particular variable um, could be done better. Maybe there's some issue with the way that they measured that variable. So by giving the details, uh, this goes back to science being a public process, right? We're putting the details out there so that they're open to criticism, open to critiques to see if there's uh, potentially flaws with them. The second main reason why you're giving uh, so much detail is that you uh, want to allow people to replicate Right? This is a very important part of the scientific process, making it possible for others to replicate your study. So the idea is you're giving enough detail that an experienced scientist in your field would be able to go and read this, see what you did, and reproduce the same study in their lab. So that also gives you kind of an idea of what, what sorts of details are important to include. Because I say you should go into a lot of detail but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should include absolutely everything. Obviously, some details won't have an impact. Uh, you know, if, if you do it one way versus if someone does it another way in their lab, if it's some really tiny, insignificant detail, it, it shouldn't have an impact on the results. In other words, their replication maybe is not technically exactly like yours, but it's, it's exactly like yours in all the ways that should matter. Uh, and they should get the same results that you do. So that, you know, you want to include enough detail that the person can evaluate and replicate your study, uh, but not uh, include totally superfluous, unimportant details. Okay, so that's the methods section. Uh, immediately after methods, the next thing that you're going to see is the results section. 
And uh, so, so the methods section is saying, here's what I did. The results section is saying, here's what I found. Uh, I, the way I would put it is you're, you're, going, to, you're going to summarize um, uh, or analyze the, I would say, the data. And there's definitely an emphasis on just giving people the, the facts, just giving them the data. What are the numbers in terms of what you discovered? Uh, so if you were measuring some variable, just report the measurements. Report any statistical tests or analyses you ran on those measurements. So you're going to see a lot of statistics in the results section. That often makes it very hard to wade through. Um, but it's also nice to have all of the, the numbers there so that if you want to check into exactly what kinds of tests someone made, uh, that, that's all there. So if you don't think their conclusions are, you know, if you think their conclusions are maybe questionable, you can check into how they, you know, what kinds of calculations did they run? What did their data actually look like? If they said, you know, this variable uh, was much higher than this other variable or it had a large effect on it. Uh, what what did they what numerically did they mean by large effect? And you can actually go into should be able to go into their results and actually see those numbers. What you shouldn't put in the results, uh, you don't want to have uh, a discussion here. You don't want to be uh, saying what the conclusions or implications of the results are. So no, uh, I'm going to say no conclusions in the sense, no conclusions or implications. You're trying to be very, um, I'm gonna say be very neutral. So you want to be neutral in how you're presenting it. This is not the time to make an argument that your hypothesis was brilliant and you found exactly what you thought you would find or to explain why you didn't find what you expected or to say what the larger implications are for society. Uh, that is not something for the results. Uh, the methods and the results section, they're just to show in substantial detail what you did and what you found. Now, in the next section, you do get to have a discussion about what uh, what these things mean in your, you know, and give a little more opinion or interpretation to things. In that section, I'm just going to squeeze it over in here on the side. That section is called quite logically, it's called the discussion section. So this is the last part of the article normally, and this is where uh, you do get to, you do get to interpret, you get to interpret or evaluate the results. So this is where um, uh, you can talk about uh, what conclusions you're drawing, you know, uh, the hypothesis that we started off with was confirmed or it wasn't supported or we had uh, some surprising results here. You can talk about you can talk about the implications. You can say things like the things that we found here have dramatic important implications for uh, clinical uh, psychotherapists. Uh, these things need to be considered when people are doing therapy, whatever those implications are, or maybe they have implications for um, for our understanding. You can say uh, that uh, that this has very much uh, changed how we view a particular uh, prominent theory in psychology, for example. Uh, you often also often uh, see in the discussion section, you will see a discussion of the limitations of the study. All studies have limitations, and so sometimes the authors will say, okay, here's what we found, here's why it was important, uh, useful, here are some implications, but it's also important to recognize that uh, our measurement technique may have been flawed in the following ways, or we only used a very small number of participants, or the participants were all uh, older people or younger people, or they were all uh, from this income bracket, or whatever limitations there may be. Uh, you you want to? It's not it's not that you can't have limitations in a study, but if you have significant limitations, it's important that the um, that the reader be informed about them. 
Uh, by the way, this is also, the discussion section is also a great place to look uh, for ideas for your own research. Uh, because, for example, with the limitations, you can say, hey, they're telling me specifically certain things they didn't do in their study that could have been important. So that by itself may provide some ideas for a follow-up study that would address those limitations, that would compensate uh, or fill in where those limitations left a gap in our knowledge. Uh, sometimes in the discussion section they'll even go so far, and this is not at all unusual, they'll, they'll often say, here are some important directions for future research, uh, research. Here is basically what the next study should look at. You know, we found these uh, parts, we found these certain things that fill in, help to fill in our understanding of this subject. But here are some things we didn't find or we haven't explored yet. And now we're ready to look at those. Uh, and wouldn't it be great if somebody did that? And so obviously, uh, these, uh, this is a great place to look for ideas for your own research. Yeah, but those are the, uh, uh, we've covered all the main parts of a research paper. Uh, so hopefully, and, and like I said, there's a lot more details. The publication manual tells you about all kinds of specific things that should or should not be in each section. And when you go to start writing this, uh, it would definitely be a good idea to be referencing that. Uh, but hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea so that as you go out and you, and you read these articles, you have an idea of what you're looking at.